Hey fam, it's Mariah, and welcome to Calvary Conversations, where we simplify God's Word to reach today's culture by casting down arguments through real, radical testimonies and biblical conversations. Now let's get started. Welcome to Calvary Conversations. My name is Mariah, and today we have a special guest in studio with us today, and I'm here with my dad, Pastor Craig Roders. Hey. And our special guest shared on four reasons why he believes in a pre-trib rapture, and we are with him today. So here is Pastor David Guzik. Hello. Hey. Welcome. Again. <laughs> is your dad not a special guest? <laughs> no, no, yeah, no. he's... Just dad. No, yeah, he's here a dad. lot. So That's right. He's so just yeah. dad, but... He's special, but not a yeah, guest. Yeah, he special. is special. <laughs> <laughs> he's very special. Very special. No, but we're thankful you're here with us today, and we... Um, are going to link your video that you did in the description below if you guys want to watch that. And What's the four points. Date? Tell the date. So um, the February twenty sixth. Twenty sixth Sunday. Yeah. So we have David Guzik with us, and he, my dad, gave a bio that was really good. But his um, wife is Inga Lil. Is that how you pronounce That's it? That's great. You pronounce that well. Inga Lil. It's a Swedish name. Okay. Uh, they have three adult children and two grandchildren. Is that up That's to right. date? And he is a teaching pastor at Calvary Chapel, Santa Barbara, and has been um, in Christian service more than 35 years, including two church plants and more than seven years as a missionary in Germany and as a director and teacher for the International Bible College. He is an author and widely used Bible commentary, which we use here at Calvary or Valley a lot. Um, and that is Enduring, Enduring Word and blue letter bible so you guys can check that out i'll also put that in the description below and my mom actually was able to go with my dad to the endure is it the enduring word cruise is that how you i guess that's what's what we it called, called it? sure something like that i don't that. even know yeah. but the i was supposed cruise. to go i remember <laughs> yeah. i was supposed to go but it's their 25th anniversary yeah. and my brother and i gave um gave up ours for them to yes. go and so it was really cool because my mom was able to be baptized um, at the Jordan River by David, by David Guzik. Yep. So, and she passed away last June of breast cancer. So she's in heaven. And mm. what we'll be talking about today um, is answering some of your guys' questions about, you know, the rapture, the end times, Bible prophecy, and also talking about why we need to be a church that is ready for Christ's return, like that bride waiting for the groom, pure and spotless. So, mm. That's going to lead us into tonight's service at 6 p.m., which we'll be talking about revival and what that looks like. So Guaranteed. that was a lot. <laughs> yeah. That's right, yeah. Um, that was a lot. Yeah. But so first question, which you guys gave us your questions when we did the Instagram poll. So the first one was, so why is it important to even study the end times or Bible prophecy? Craig, have you heard people give this figure, they say, what is it? I don't know, 20%, 25% or something people say of the Bible or verses in the Bible mm. have to do with prophecy. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. I've heard estimates. Yeah, I've heard estimates anywhere from like 15 to 30, yeah. but it, it's a biblical subject. Yeah. Yeah. The Bible deals with uh, prophetic subjects a lot. Mm -hmm. and, and when I say prophetic, I mean, uh, in just this sense, things that God is announcing will happen in the future. Yeah. And obviously some of those have already been fulfilled. There was a lot of prophecy about the first coming of Jesus mm -hmm. already fulfilled, mm -hmm. but then there's a lot that has not yet been fulfilled. And Jesus himself mm -hmm. spoke a lot about his second coming, but that's really the reason. It's just because this is what the Bible exactly. talks about. And as believers, we should be interested in that. Amen. Yeah. Amen. It's good. The whole counsel of God. Yeah, that's right. Uh, next question, it says, why do a lot of churches avoid the topic of Jesus returning, the book of Revelation, and Bible prophecy? Why is that like not talked about in a lot of churches? Uh, I think there's probably several reasons. One of them is that uh, it, it's an area of controversy mm -hmm. and has been since the early mm -hmm. church. I, I really got to chase down this quotation from one of the early church fathers. But I, I read something in there within the last six months uh, ran across a quote from one of them where they, they spoke that in the early church there were different opinions mm -hmm. on how the end times fit mm -hmm. together and what we would call eschatology. Mm -hmm. So some people avoid it because they think it's controversial. Other people avoid it, I think, sometimes because there's been a, um, in some circles, there's been something of a fanaticism. Mm -hmm. I, I could point to you some instances in church history 
uh, where people got just kind of freaked out on Bible prophecy, yeah, and it ended in ruin. Mm. Uh, so maybe for some of those reasons are mm. are why, and then others, you know, it's it takes some study, it takes some some yeah. work. It's not you, you got to roll up your sleeves, yeah. so to speak, and dig in exactly. if you're going to have an understanding good enough to be able to really communicate it to other mm-hmm. people. Yeah, I think, how long were you in Revelation? A year and a half. <laughs> like yeah. a year and a half. And I saw this one uh, series or someone who did it on it. And they just like did each chapter, like one. Yeah, ser- so like, 22 and I was weeks. Like, wow, amazing. like that yeah. was crazy. But the cool thing about it, like you said, is that's why we need to be like in the word studying. Like you were able to do that on your own, even though you were like raised around, you know, that belief and matured in that. But I feel like I was able to do that as well. And I encourage everyone to do that. Like whatever you grew up knowing or believing, a lot of people are now believing like dominion theology and all these things. Um, (laughs) But I would just encourage you to, if you're out there, to study it for yourself and be Berean, search the scriptures and figure it out and don't just go based off what man says, but I'm listening to your sermon says. because we had someone who was a mid-tribber yeah. that was touched by your sermon and kind and of went post, back to yeah. pre-trib. That's pretty cool. Praise the Lord. God is good. All right, next question says, what scriptures do you believe strongly argue, or I would say encourage, for a pre-trib rapture? There's a lot, but... Well, yeah. one of, to me, the most persuasive things, that was the first thing that I kind of led off with, with mm. the message itself today, was I think that the principle of non-contradiction in mm. the scriptures... Yeah. Is, is a very strong argument for the pre-tribulation rapture. Mm-hmm. Just that there's different scriptural perspectives on uh, what kind of world Jesus is going to return to. Yeah. Uh, different scriptural uh, perspectives on uh, how Jesus is going to return, the manner of his return. Mm. Uh, different passages on the manner of how the people of God will meet Jesus or, or connect with him in that. Yeah. Different passages on the predictability of the day. I think the just those principles of non-contradiction mm-hmm. really placed there. But if anything, if I, if I could boil it down to one verse, that for, and by means, this isn't the only <coughs> verse, but... It's that God has not appointed us to wrath. Amen. And, and if you understand that this period that we call the Great Tribulation, especially as it's detailed in the book of Revelation, uh, it, it's a time of an outpouring of God's mm. wrath yeah. upon the earth. Yeah. And, and so that, I, if, if I were to, to boil it down to one thing, mm. but again, it's, I, I wouldn't want to restrict it by that. Mm. Somebody could feel, well, if I refute <laughs> that, then, <laughs> yeah. you know, the <laughs> argument's <done>. destroyed. <laughs> no, it, it's not that at all. But th- I think that's a leading concept. Yeah. For me. What would you say to someone who says like, where is that? Where do we see what, which I know Revelation place in Revelation, but so where is it that it's the wrath of God? Where do you see that? I mean, it says well, the wrath of the Lamb. The way that Jesus speaks of it in uh, the Olivet Discourse really speaks of this outpouring of God's wrath. Jesus said very vividly in Matthew chapter 24 that this would be the worst mm. time of all humanity. Yeah. And, and when you think about the, the things that humanity has experienced in the past, Mm-hmm. That's staggering yeah. for yeah. Jesus to Thanks say. To the Black Plague, a yes. third of the world. Mm-hmm. Now, when, when you go through the uh, uh, the Book of Revelation, mm-hmm. look, th- there are some people who appoint uh, who who explain the Book of Revelation as something that really has no connection with reality. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. just all poetic symbols mm-hmm. and this and that. And look, we agree there is definitely symbolism. There mm-hmm. are signs. The Book of Revelation itself declares that, but mm-hmm. th- there's something tied to real world events. Mm-hmm. I-, I would at least strongly believe mm-hmm. in the Book of Revelation. Mm-hmm. And if you take that with any kind of seriousness at all, uh, there's unbelievable calamity that comes upon the earth mm-hmm. by the judgment, the wrath mm-hmm. of God yeah. in the great tribulation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I really like that you brought up the thing of, cause I've heard so many people um, say for people who believe like that we'll just almost be in a bubble. So we'll be like through it, but in a bubble is they bring up Egypt and yes. the Israelites. But I like how you said, well, he doesn't mention that. Like he doesn't mention the Israelites. Mm-hmm. He talks about mm-hmm. lot and then Noah and if you remember those stories, Lot was taken out and Noah and his family yes. were taken out. And so I thought that was like a really good thing to mention. Yeah, but. in the Olivet Discourse, Jesus never uses, well, the scriptures never use that. 
uh, the deliverance God gave to Israel out of Egypt mm-hmm. as an example yeah. of what it'll be like for his second coming. Yeah. Uh, but instead, those examples, just as you mentioned, yeah. a lot and Noah are the examples. And those are examples mm-hmm. where God's people were delivered. Amen. Then judgment came. Mm. Amen. I like how I someone w- said it too. They're like taken up, like just like the ark was like above mm-hmm. that. It was like a good picture, but. Oh. And I also liked how you said too about every other belief most of them is that you can kind of know the time right mid-trib you're going to know th- uh, three and a half years from the abomination yeah. of desolation where this way the only way you can have a thief of the night or you know a twink of an mm-hmm. eye and have that expectancy is a pre-trib yeah. because that argue from imminence i think is really important and mm-hmm. i i got a little bit of a burr under my saddle i think i, I expressed a little more second <laughs> service than i did <laughs> first but you, I, I really have come across guys who try to explain away eminence because look, they would tell you, they'd look you straight in the eye and say, Jesus Christ is not returning today. <laughs> he's not returning tomorrow. And I can guarantee he's not returning for several years. I mean, they, they'd mm, say that. That's mm. and, and, and the reason they would say that is based on their eschatological understanding. Mm. Yet they would still say, oh no, we believe in eminence mm. because a believer can die at any time. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Well, as I pointed out in the message, it's true that the believer can die in time. But anybody who tries Mm -hmm. to tell you that that's what Jesus was speaking about Mm -hmm. in all those watch and be ready, it wasn't watch and be ready because you might die tomorrow. It's watch and be ready because I am coming soon. And Maranatha doesn't mean come quickly. I mean, it doesn't say, Mm -hmm. Maranatha, you're going to die. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Maranatha, go to the Lord quickly. No, it's come Lord Jesus. Mm, That's good. All right. Last question says, Many would argue the pre-trib stance makes Christians apathetic towards fighting for Christ's kingdom today since things are just going to get worse. Um, but what is your argument on this? Well, Mariah, I, I think that's a valid thing for people to bring up because I'll say that. Mm-hmm. The teaching of the pre-tribulation rapture has had that effect mm-hmm. yeah. on some people. Some people would even say many people. Mm-hmm. And that's bad. Yeah. yeah, It is bad. Yeah. Yeah. But here's a couple principles is number one, we never buy into the accusation that the misuse mm-hmm. of a doctrine mm. yeah. disqualifies that doctrine. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Look, there's people who misuse the idea of salvation uh, by grace alone through faith alone, mm-hmm. but their misuse of it does That's not nullified. argue against the doctrine. That's good. And number two, we would just say that, um, it is really important for Christians to realize that though we will not be under the wrath of God Mm -hmm. in the tribulation, Mm -hmm. uh, the Bible says, Jesus said himself, in the world you Mm -hmm. will have tribulation. Mm -hmm. Jesus said that we should occupy until he comes. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jesus said that we should be about our father's business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So no Christian should take what I regard as the truth Mm -hmm. of the pre-tribulation rapture to be any kind of excuse to let the community around them go to Mm -hmm. hell, to be unconcerned about uh, furthering God's cause in this world. Mm -hmm. No, we should do all of those things and be zealously about our Lord's business Mm -hmm. while at the same time uh, realizing that Jesus could come for his church yeah. at any time. Exactly. Yeah. And I like how you said that in the message, how you were talking about the Jesus revolution and the movie that just came out, but how back then that's what they were talking about. Mm-hmm. Like they were talking about Maranatha, like God's coming back for us. Like mm-hmm. let's have in a hunger to share the good news, share the gospel. Cause we don't know when he can come back. So leading into our final thing before we end, we have like five minutes, but for tonight we're going to talk about revival because everyone some people haven't known and they're like, wait, Asbury, what? Like I thought <laughs> my, my fiance actually, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, bless he, his he doesn't have any social media. He was like, I thought when your dad was talking about that, you was talking about the one in the seventies. I didn't know anything was going on right now, but I mean, yeah, they're calling it a revival, but what would you say is like something that you're going to talk about tonight? You guys stay tuned for that. That'll be on YouTube. But for those who, are we I feel like we have the same type of generation like they did back then, like Eastern religion, psychedelics, There's a lot new of common age. ground. So there what really would you is. say for those young people or just anyone out there? Um I, don't know, just I would say that them. historically speaking, it's common. It's not universal, mm-hmm. 
but in works of revival in the past, there's been a heightened sense, yeah. a heightened anticipation of the readiness of, of Jesus' return and a readiness for yeah. it. Mm. And that was really true mm-hmm. of the Jesus movement. Mm-hmm. Yeah which probably arguably was the last significant revival Mm -hmm. uh, in the U.S. Uh, It was very much true. It's a little hard for people to comprehend, but a teaching about the end times, the soon return of Jesus, Mm -hmm. the pre-tribulation rapture, being ready for the return of Jesus, living Mm -hmm. with a readiness for the Mm -hmm. return of Jesus. That was an important aspect of the Jesus movement. Yeah. And I, I think that that is entirely consistent with a, a work of revival that God does. Definitely. It's been true in the past. And, and I, I think it could very well be true in the present day. Yeah. And yeah. it's like keeping with repentance where it's like, my dad always jokes, but it's a true statement and it might be graphic, but you don't want to be caught with your pants down, basically doing <laughs> something you shouldn't do yeah. with like, I mean, back then, back like second, you don't want to be doing things you shouldn't in fornication and people, with adultery and the pornography and drunkenness, like you don't want that. And so it's this eagerness, like, okay, he can come back like a blink of the eye, like any moment. Whereas if you think it's just death, you're like, uh, I'm not outside. I don't hear any bombs coming. Like I'm not sick. I don't I'm think, young. you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. People yeah. can easily still just go get away with their sin. But when you know, like you said, dad's coming home at any point, I'm like, I want to be, right. I want to be aware. Home. I want to be living right. So in, in a, in a parable that Jesus told, he, he spoke of sort of a wicked servant in yeah. this parable mm-hmm. and the wicked servant had the attitude, my master delays mm-hmm. his coming. Mm-hmm. And, and in the parable Jesus told that, the that was lazy. like indicative of a wicked attitude yeah. on behalf of that. And, and I think that that's a bad yeah. attitude yeah. for believers to have. Yeah. yeah. And, and it certainly doesn't lend itself to holiness of living exactly. and it doesn't lend itself either to evangelistic zeal mm. no and i even mm. i mean I don't, i'm trying to be good but i even heard a calvary pastor we all know that said oh young people don't want to hear about the rapture they don't want to hear about the lord coming back and i'm going i got saved at 18 yeah. and i was pretty hip i used to joke about being a bachelor to the rapture and i don't right, have time to, right. you know what i mean that kind of stuff. i said where were you, man? I mean, you're older mm-hmm. than me. You should be doing it. But it's just funny how even Calvary, I heard a Calvary pastor that said that kind of yeah. funkiness. And I'm going, I see everyone, at least at our church, right? Young All people are adults. like, you know, just, I mean, Mariah's getting married soon. So she's saying, maybe not on my like, honeymoon night. Uh, but, yeah. Yeah. Not yeah. but, but you know, I mean, I mean, I mean, really this world is so great. I mean, I don't know. What, we've got a message for the world. Look, the world is so confused, so crazy, so aimless. Yeah. Believers in light of, of, what the Bible teaches about end times, eschatology. We've got a beautiful message mm. for the world is that God has a purpose, a plan that he's mm. working out. And, and it's not confusing to God. It's yeah. not mixed mm. up to him what he's doing. And we can just rest and trust exactly. in that. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And it's going to get, I mean, like like we were talking about, like I said, David had the privilege of baptizing my wife and she was blessed by that in the Jordan River. But she's with the Lord now and I have Amen. to realize it's like until you really go through, you go, do I really believe heaven's real? Do I really yes. believe it's better? And I go, I, I should be very happy for her. I'm just Actually. sad we miss her. Of course. I want to be with her. I mean, so I should be, I am, yeah. you know, I love what John Corsi said. I haven't lost my kids. I know exactly mm. where they're. I'm just that's missing right. them because right. I'd like to be with them. And that's the way yeah. we should be. We should be excited about eternity and, you know, having kind of pilgrims light roots here, but our yes. heart is to, I like what Keith Green used to say, we're on a sinking ship, throwing out the life preserver as many people will take it. That's yeah. the way we should live is we're here to, evangelize, exactly. teach the word you to know. get as many people to heaven as possible. And with that understanding of eternity, you, you mourn for those who pass, but not as, the world. as those yeah. who have no hope yep. because yeah. it is, it's, it's a different kind of yeah. mourning, yeah. Yeah. a exactly. different kind of sadness altogether. Mm. And this life's a vapor, right? We're going to be That's with right. our yeah. loved ones yes. in a second. That's why yes. I also encourage like people who, I mean, it talks about that people who are like thinking about getting married or this or that, like me knowing I'm about to get married in 27 days Who's counting, I, right? Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. Amazon's counting. Yeah. But it yeah. makes me still like, I was looking at my fiance and we joke about like, we're okay with the Lord coming back before then because that's the greatest honeymoon is mm. in heaven with Jesus. Yeah. It's like we compare like so many things on this earth. I'm like, you can't even think of like whatever it's Maui or somewhere in Greece, like the most beautiful place. It's that times a billion 
gazillion. You can't even compare how beautiful heaven is and the feelings that you'll feel. Like everything is just Greece is pretty nice. Perfect. <laughs> so I'm excited. You, you know, we have all these thoughts, but if you if you really just give it a little bit of consideration, it's mm-hmm. it's crazy to think that we're gonna miss anything yeah. mm-hmm. on mm-hmm. earth. Yeah. And yeah. Think, uh, like I compared think about, to heaven. Exactly. Sorry, but when you think about like marriage. You know, I, I love my wife. You love everyone. But it's like to think there's going to be no, ma- it's going to be so intense yeah. that we're going to have marriage. I mean, I think if it's not really intense, we're going to be going, hey, can we go back to the marriage? Yeah, yeah that's I mean, right. That's how awesome yeah. heaven's going to be where you go. That's I just love everyone with this, such yeah. love that I don't miss my wife. Exactly. You know, I'm just like, I, you know, that's, that's, I'm just, telling. that's mind blowing. Like the rapture, like you said, yes. it's just, if it yeah. wasn't the Bible, you wouldn't believe it could happen. Yeah. So yeah. that's why I'm telling young people just. Get excited for Christ's return, like yeah. share the good news. And I do see that like our young adults group, one of our favorite movies that we watched together was it's called Before the Wrath. And it was like a documentary and it had like, I think it was like Amir Zafadi and Jack Hibbs and all them. But it was just cool because it reminded us of like the picture of the wedding, like the Galilean wedding with mm-hmm. the pre trip rapture and just how beautiful that is. And so I don't know. I'm just excited for Christ's return and hopefully we all are and if you're not and you don't know the Lord we just want to encourage you um that he wants you and he loves you Mm. and today is the day of salvation so if you have any questions you guys can email us um also put any comments down below we'd love to reach out to you give you a bible you can visit us here at Calvary Valley if you don't have a church home Mm. and we're just thankful that you guys can be listening today. But David, thank you again for joining us. Thank you. you pleasure to be any here. Any last closing thoughts, anything for tonight? Come quickly, Before Lord Jesus. That's right. And, <laughs> and you know, I, I will say this relevant. More to that. Yeah. I, one thing that God has often done in revival, I'm not going to say it's mm-hmm. like a law, but I'm talking about historically, yeah. is that God has sent revival before mm. very significant catastrophes on the earth. There's a great revival that came to the United States before the Civil War. Another one that came before the First World War Mm -hmm. uh, across Europe and in the U.S. And I I can't say that the Bible promises this, but it would not surprise me at all if there was not a great revival outpouring before the rapture of the church. Exactly. And and so, yes. Again, I can't say the Bible promises it, but to me, it would be very consistent with the nature of God Mm. to do that. And that should make us more filled with anticipation. Exactly. So make sure to check out our video tonight as David Guzik talks about revival. But if you haven't already, please make sure to like, subscribe, and share this video. If you like to listen to us, wherever you get your podcast, just type in Calvary Conversations. You can also check out our behind the scenes on Instagram at Calvary Conversations. And this is a little center supported. So if you like to donate, you guys can do that in the description below. Thanks so much, guys, and God bless.